This is an incredible coin set, but it does have some disappointing issues from the Royal Mint. This is the two ounce, 10 coin silver proof set for the Queen's Beasts. Some of these coins have issues and we'll talk about those in this video. But again, Royal Mint quality control seem to be letting us down because as well as the bad coins, we've got one heck of a bad box. Everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for this week's edition of In Focus Friday, the show where we take a good close look at cool things made of silver and gold. This week we have an exciting, wonderful, at least in principle anyway, set of coins from the Royal Mint to showcase. This is the two ounce silver proof 10 coin set, all 10 beasts for the first time in two ounce silver proof. Prior to this they'd all been in one ounce silver proof. I've got all my lovely one ounce silver proofs out. We'll be having a video on those at some point in the near future. But this week saw the release from the Royal Mint and I want to showcase this set for you here today. Talk about it and talk about the disappointment that I have in what I received. I'm not disappointed in the set. I love this idea and I really want to have a perfect version of this set. I've been a huge fan of the Queen's Beast series all the way throughout and as you'll see in a moment when we go through, there are some quality issues once again, let down by the quality from the Royal Mint. Now this set is mine, it's bought by me with my own money, I'm not being sponsored or anything like that from the Royal Mint to make this video. In fact, I'm gonna be obviously pretty negative towards the Royal Mint in certain aspects. Also, I wanna do share a little bit of the experience as a customer about how they're gonna try and hopefully look to resolve this issue. As you can see, a lovely box. Look at those with my pepper plants on the windowsill. So lots to talk about, but the, birth, the first thing I should say is that there is an issue on the old box. Uh, super reflective box, by the way. Goodness me, I didn't know it was that reflective. So first thing I noticed when I took this all out of the wrapping was this big old chunk of the box missing. Not very good at all. And I know it's just a box and I know a lot of people might say, you know, the box really doesn't matter, it's the coins that matter, which, blooming hell, they look lovely. Um, there are some issues with some of the coins though, which we'll talk about. Uh, but some people might say, well, the box is a box, it doesn't matter, it's just a box. Well, it's all part of the package and if you're paying £1,835 for this set, which is a lot of money, you want to make sure it is right and it is good. And the very least that I would expect is a box that's good. We know the Royal Mint has had issues in the past with quality control on coins, but surely boxes are even easier to check than coins, certainly when it comes to something that big and obvious on the back of the coin. It's really hard to focus with this reflection, but something like that on the back, it's obviously been dropped at some point. Um, it was not in in terms of like damage on the outer cardboard box. There's no evidence of that. There's no indication that it had been dropped in transit. The outer box was fine. So all I can imagine is that that's happened at some point either in the packaging process or uh, the manufacturing process of the boxes and it's not been picked up, which is a real shame. And it seems like a really easy thing to pick up. So the next thing to talk about is the quality of a couple of the coins. Now, it's going to be pretty hard to see, I think, some of these issues, but they are there nonetheless, which is a problem for me. Um, I think from memory there was a bit of a scratch on this Queen's Beast Falcon. It's a very small, very minute scratch just around here. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. I think just by the light you can see... Just at the top of the, you see there's three feathers behind that shield emblem. There's just a little faint scratch there, which is marginal, but something that I would still not expect to see. And then on the red dragon, there's a little tiny scratch just up here, um, which again, I don't know if it's very easy to see through the capsule. I have in very careful conditions, taken the capsule tops off to have a look at these. They are not dust specks, they are little tiny scratches. And then the last one I think was the Yale, and there was a little mark just above the tail of the Yale. 
you can see how super reflective these are. So there's a little tiny scratch there. Not very evident on the sort of, there you can see it a bit better, just, just at the tip of my finger there. But uh, not very evident to the naked eye, but still they're there. And those kind of marks will knock down the quality and the kind of resellability of the set, which is disappointing. But I think, that, you know, for, for me, the box is obviously the most important pit, the damage there. Those little marks on the coins, um, they don't seem like much from what I've just showed you there, but at the end of the day, they are, and it's still part of the package, which I would not expect. And I don't expect and see those kind of marks on other um, proof coins when I've had them from the Raw Mint. So, yeah, we're going to talk in a moment as well about the potential resolution of these, but I think that's pretty much where we are in terms of quality control. Um, I haven't spotted any uh, milk spotting on the rest of these coins. Um, you know, they are gorgeous, absolutely wonderful. And despite a couple of minute little quality issues uh, on some of these coins, they are fantastic. And I just love this series. And a lot of people have talked about the um, negative aspects of the Raw Mint releasing this coin series, uh, that they're kind of cashing in on the success of this series. But I don't think that that is something I'm worried about because at the end of the day, these two ounce silver proofs are part of this heritage of the set. The two ounce bullions were always there. And I was always like, confused as to why like with these the one ounce silvers why there were one ounce versions instead of two ounce proofs i would have always thought that surely you'd make more sense to have the uh, the proofs in two ounce but apparently not so to have them now finally and you can see the difference here side by side there are two ounce proofs and i'm really excited about that not massively keen on the idea of the reverse frosted proofs. That does seem a little bit like they're kind of stretching at straws to cash in. Um, <clears throat> I did consider getting the silver reverse frosted proof, uh, which was in quarter ounce silver for each coin, but it just didn't seem right for me uh, as a sort of purchaser of these. I want these as a, as a collection. The other thing which slightly irks me is that the dates on all of these coins are 2021. So you've got, of course, the yellow Beaufort one ounce silver proof, 2019, you've got the 2021 date on the two ounce silver proofs and it'll be the same for all the other coins with the exception of the Griffin and the White Lion, which I think were both 2021 releases in their own rights. So from that perspective and the hype around the Queen's Bee series, I'm not bothered about this. There's a limited mintage of 300 of these series in this particular presentation. Maximum coin mintage is 310, um, which is great tiny mintage if uh, I'm being honest and considering I've seen not just myself with a few quality issues there are a few other people out there who have experienced quality control issues on their sets and some are just returning um, whether or not they'll be recycled by the raw mint into general circulation I don't know but ultimately if there's only 300 sets and some of them are not faring too well in terms of quality that means that any sets that are out there that are good quality are of course going to be quite sought after so whilst this is very much a kind of collector's item for me and I'll be very much looking to hold on to it for quite a while I love it I think it's wonderful um, I am also concerned about the quality because at the end of the day these coins will appreciate well in value that's my opinion, not financial advice, by the way. <clears throat> I don't think if, by the way, you're going out there and spending £4,000 a set on these, like some coin dealers are asking, that that's a financially sound investment. But I think if you got them at issue price from the Raw Mint, there's a really good chance of them uh, appreciating pretty well in price. Just look at the beauty of those coins. Uh, it's just a shame when you get up close to a couple of them, there's a few issues on them. But the coin issues are, you know, so this is part of now where we go for resolution of the issues that we've experienced here the first being the box so of course it's really disappointing when this kind of thing happens when you get the coins in from the raw mint and they're not great and i've had my fair share of coins from the raw mint over the last five years of buying uh coins from the raw mint and i've had i'd say probably about 75 percent hit rate of really good coins i'd say about 25 percent of all the coins that i've ordered in the past at some point have gone back for replacements uh, or gone back for refunds if there were no uh, replacements available. So that's a rough estimate. I could probably work it out exactly, but 
you know, um, the vast majority, I'd say, are good. Um, and when you do get stuff that's not quite right, the Raw Mint is great at sorting it out, and that's what they've always been. So now the test is really for the Raw Mint to try and sort this particular um, issue out, the box and potentially the replacement, or I don't know if it's possible, um, reminting of some of the coins in this particular series that don't meet the quality standards. So for me, uh, this is kind of lucky, I suppose, that I've, I say lucky, I've spent enough money at the Raw Mint over this last 12 month period that I now qualify to have an account manager. Yay me. Um, it's just because there's been, I think it's something like a £10,000 um, annual amount that you have to spend to then be given an account manager. And there's been a couple of coins uh, bought for flipping that I've put me over that limit. So I've got the account manager now. Brilliant. So I got on the phone to my account manager and explained the situation about this set. And, you know, that was very good, really good to hear from the other side that they are going to take this seriously. They're going to look into this properly. I was given a number of potential resolution outcomes. Of course, my biggest concern is not having a set at all, because ultimately, I think if I was given the choice, which is one of the options here, when I send this back, which is going back next week, they will look at it. They will examine the whole thing, I can't just send the box back to get a new box, they'll examine all of the coins in this particular release and they will work out if it meets their quality control standards. The box certainly won't. Some of these coins might not as well. We'll have to see what they say, whether they think that some of these little micro scratches are appropriate and within their quality control boundaries. If so, fine. And then I'll be given the options of they can either replace the entire set with a new one. And for me, I'm kind of like, well, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna to have to make sure it's right because I don't really wanna go through this again. But it's unlikely that they'll have any because this, of course, is a very limited edition series and it was sold out. Then the second option is that they could potentially look to restrike some of the coins, not guaranteed by any stretch at all. Um, who knows what uh, their policy will be on a set like this. I would like to think that the Raw Mint would look to do that on such a historic series uh, with such a brilliant release and of course with such a low mintage as well that um, they certainly will still have the dies and the dies will be in good condition still to perhaps mint or restrike some of these coins. Who knows? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I have heard of other people having coins restruck like the, um, like the Great Engravers series and things like that, but we'll see. Um, and then the last option is, to, well, there's two more options, sorry. The last option is to have a complete and utter refund and have no coins or then to have what I've got here returned back to me. Now, on the subject of the box, that's going to be interesting to see whether the Raw Mint will look to replace the box entirely. <clears throat> One would like to think that the manufacturer of the box kind of guarantees them or has made some spares or has some available or has the ability to make another box. But of course, the question is going to come down to money as to whether or not it's going to be financially viable for the Raw Mint to just manufacture one additional box. Or maybe if there's a couple of other people who've got bad boxes to um, make a few extra boxes for them. Or whether they've got some in stock that are extra, some spares, just in case these kind of situations arose. So yeah, there's uh, a whole host of different potential options there. Uh, it's nice that the Raw Mint took this seriously. I, uh, you know, I have the account manager. I don't know quite whether or not this would be as easy a process for Joe Bloggs, who hasn't got an account manager. So we'll just have to wait and see how it progresses. Of course, it's going to take a couple of weeks for them to even, you know, process and look to get the decisions on this. I promise you that I will share the outcomes on how this goes. We might end up, I think, for what I am going to say right now is that I think that they won't restrike any coins. I don't think that's pr probably going to happen. I'd love it if they did, because what I really want, what I absolutely wanted, first thing on Monday morning when I logged on the Royal Mint's website and I saw these coins become available, I just said immediately to myself, I want that set and I want it to be good. I want it to be perfect. And if the Royal Mint can go away and say to me, or to anybody else that's bought this set, Look, we want to make sure that the quality is right. The quality is perfect. We want to get this right for you and get your coins to you in as good a condition as possible. Then, you know what? All credit to them. That's fine. Now, I do have the invoice here from my order, and there's a really interesting paragraph on it which says, More than 1,000 years of dedication to quality stand behind the products of the Royal Mint. You are now part of that legacy. So it says, please share your moments with Royal Mint UK. And I mean this in the greatest respect to the hardworking individuals at the Royal Mint, whether you be in coin design, on the shop floor, manufacturing, 
or quality control. It, it needs to get better. If people are dropping £1,835 on a coin set like this, they need to be good. They need to be perfect. They need to be as good as possible. You need to have knowledgeable coin experts within quality control who are examining these coins, especially in a limited mintage set like this. I can get if you're making 7,000, 10,000 of a particular proof coin that it's harder, more man hours to do. But if there's 300 in this series, you need to make sure that all of the coins are good and it's not acceptable to let them go. And I've seen far worse condition coins than mine shared online, unfortunately. And lastly, of course, the box. You know, this, this is easy. This should never have left the Royal Mint like this. And it does kind of beg the question to ask, you know, did they have only a certain number? Did they have the exact number of boxes? And I'm just the unlucky one that got a box that looks like this with this poor quality. You know, that's not good. Not good at all. So this is meant in the most constructive feedback way to the Royal Mint. Please, please, please do better. We'll see how it goes with this set. As I said, I will keep you all in the loop as to how it goes across the next couple of weeks and we'll see where the land lies. But I am super excited and also super disappointed at the same time, which is a shame. And I know it's the same for other people and I've even seen other people sort of say, you know, that's it, they're not going to buy proof coins from the Royal Mint, certainly silver. Anyway, there seem to be too many issues with silver. And that's a shame, that puts people off and it's not good. So look, look I've, I've rambled on long enough about this now. Uh, I hope we can get some resolution to it. If you've enjoyed this video, thumbs up, share this video around on your social media, that would be wonderful. We've got quite a lot of other content to talk about for Queen's Beasts and for Royal Mint this next coming week. Uh, we've got the two ounce completer coin, that's sitting here on my desk ready to go as well. So that will probably be next week's episode, two ounce silver completer, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We've also got some grading results back from the Royal Mint, uh, well, so from NGC, from Royal Mint Coins, uh, including three graces. So that's going to come next week as well. And we'll talk about as another hot topic, which is about the constant releases that are coming from the Royal Mint. Are they too many? Are they too much? Are people getting wallet fatigued? So much more content to come. If you want to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on those videos, then make sure you do alarm bell as well. Otherwise, that's it from me today. A massive thank you to you all for watching. See you on the next one. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.